Welcome to this tutorial. My name is Gregor Heuser. I am in charge of the automation engineering at the company Comat, and that's also for the programming and control technology of this high pressure unit. Over this video, I'm going to show you the different modes of the control technology. That is how the pressure control functions and how the speed control functions. Once again, we will in detail go into different functions of the device and over the video, we are then also going to talk again about the most frequent error messages which can occur. To turn the unit on, it is important that the battery main switch is turned on to supply the control with voltage. After having turned on the main switch, we are now going to turn on the ignition key in order to supply the control with voltage. As soon as our control is driven up and the emergency stop button was monitored and adjudged to be correct, the motor control is automatically switched on. First of all, the individual components on this control cabinet. Here we have our display via which the parameters will be entered, via which the pump's information can be queried, and any malfunctions or shutdowns that may occur are displayed in plain text. Here we have the display for monitoring the engine control. So here are the control elements on which I will go into detail. On the one hand we have the control voltage lamp indicating that the control is switched on. We have the engine start and stop function here. Here we can choose between on-site control here in the cabinet or via remote control. We have the options of the settings of the two modes which I just mentioned, the pressure control and the speed control. Here we can switch our pressure on and off. Here we come to the water tank control, which can be driven either automatically or manually as far as the water supply is concerned. Down here we can open and shut down the water inlet valve while being in the manual mode. Here we have the water drain to empty the tank. Then we also have our reset button here to acknowledge malfunctions and error messages. For lighting, we have the on-off switch below. Furthermore, we have two lamps, namely one for the Chowin key. That means the engine is equipped with a flap which shuts off the air supply in the inlet in an emergency. And we also have another lamp for the alert in the case of existing warnings at the engine. So furthermore, we also have our emergency stop right here at our control cabinet. We have our adapter for the connection of the remote control. If there is no remote control connected, this connector must be connected in order to bridge the emergency stop loop. If the remote control is to be connected, you can simply pull off the plug and add the remote control plug. So, in this Fall haben wir so in this case at the remote control, we have our on-off button for the pressure. Then the function will be bridged at the switch cabinet as long as we have switched on the remote control function. Furthermore, there is an additional emergency stop at the handheld remote control. As we saw right now, I remove the emergency bridge while connecting the remote control. That means our control automatically switches off the pressure immediately and also switches off the diesel engine. 
can also be recognized by the fact that the diesel engine's control is switched off. In addition, the message appeared in the display that the emergency stop bridge has been activated. After having connected the remote control, having switched off the emergency stop again, we also can acknowledge the control's reset button. And via the yellow acknowledge button in the display, the error message can be cleared in the display. So to run the unit, of course, you also need to have water. Here we have our water tank equipped with a pressure transmitter, which in principle is the eye of the tank and watches the level for us. Up here we have a magnetic valve for the water inlet that is switched by the control to allow fresh water to run in. Down here we have our magnet valve for the water outlet to empty the tank. The water tank level is measured by the pressure transducer and indicated via the display in millibar. Below an indication of 180 millibar, fresh water is automatically refilled in the automatic mode. Now, we will first start the engine and then we will drive via the on-site control the mode of the pressure control. In the pressure control mode, we will preset the control with a desired pressure. In our case, this will be 1000 bar. The control will adjust the volume flow via the speed adjustment until the high pressure tools receive the desired pressure. So, we have the key switch standing on local. Thus, the key switch is on pressure control. We go into our task menu, then into the set point input here we can freely choose which pressure we enter. Maximum 1000 bar. We are now going to 1000 bar again. Confirm the hole with enter. Go via the F1 key back to our basic menu and start the pressure. The system is now moving into the desired pressure range of 1000 bar. We turn off the pressure, the pressure becomes switched off immediately and the system is depressurized again. In case the volume flow is insufficient at maximum speed, this is an indication that the chosen high pressure tool is too large. Then by if at minimum speed the pressure is already exceeded, it will be a minimum speed indication in the control. Respective, there will be an indication that the chosen high pressure tool is too small. The other possibility is the speed control. In this mode, we determine in the control how many revolutions the engine should run and afterwards we adjust the hydraulic pressure using the pneumatic pressure setting. We set the key switch from pressure control to speed control. Go into the menu of the speed specification. Give a set point of example 1500 revolutions Acknowledge this with enter. Checking first that the pneumatic pressure is set to zero bar. Then we start the pressure. The engine drives the desired 1500 revolutions and afterwards we slowly drive with the pneumatic pressure, the hydraulic pressure up to the desired pressure. We have a system pressure here on the pneumatic cabinet that is the pneumatic pressure generated by the diesel engine or by the compressor of the diesel engine. 
and on the right manometer we can see our adjusted pneumatic pressure. We stop the whole thing again by switching off the pressure and the engine drives back into its idling speed. Now I will come back again and talk about in detail on the different menus. So we have our basic menu here in which we can see all the engine data or the pressure, the speed, the tank level and the water temperature. In the next menu the set points have to be entered. In this case we are in the menu for the pressure control. We have now a message where it says below that the speed control is active. That's because we also have set the key switch standing to speed control below. If we switch this back, this message disappears. If we now want to set the speed in the speed control, we see the same regarding the activated mode for the pressure control. Here we have our running hours counter, which indicates the operating hours of the engine and the pump under pressure. Here we also have the opportunity to say what length of hose we have connected. Length of the high pressure hose which is essential for the control, the regulation and the pressure build up. That it is not going too fast. Then we see the switched valve cycles and the delay time. This delay is used to set the time after which the engine shall return to its idle speed following the pump being off pressure. If the pressure is switched back on during this set delay, the engine stays on load. Here we also have an alarm list. In this case, the alarm would occur, which may still be pending. We have a so-called first value message. I am now simulating the emergency stop. And now we have got the last trapped alarm in here. In this case, it's of course the emergency stop. The K and the Q stand for the upcoming alarm and the Q for the acknowledged alarm. So that means this alarm is no longer relevant for the control. After turning off the ignition, it is about to make sure that the main battery switch is turned off about two minutes after that so the exhaust after treatment system accordingly can shut down its system.